Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bifir. So, Savathun is a god of deception and trickery. This is well known at this point, but how far back does that trickery go in relation to Savathun's current plans? The true answer to that question is hard to gauge, but I think it's fair to say that she's been planning for her lucent brood ever since the events that we ushered in with the death of Oryx the Taken King. The moment Oryx died, he proved that he was no longer the strict proof eternal of the Sword Logic's supremacy, in particular his death at our hands and in the manner that he died. And in that moment, Savathun perhaps began weaving her plans and plotting her deceptions. But how far back do they go? Well, recent evidence has pointed to the fact that they may go as far back as the Red War. More importantly, that evidence has at least given us a sampling of the moments when we can know for sure that Savathun was indeed there, deceiving us and watching us. We've also learned a little more about what Savathun's song may in fact do, so we need to talk about the lore tab from the new auto rifle, Chrysura Melo, which reads as follows. There's a saying among con artists, Half the fun is showing the mark which cub hit the ball before you take their money. Savathun understands. In her crystalline prison, she reflects on all her surreptitious winks and little nods. The risks taken and the boundaries pushed to keep herself entertained and her worm fed. Before, Osiris stumbles as he walks through the last city. Beneath his robes, something erupts in a frenzy of motion. He pauses to compose himself and then walks on, trailing careless splatters of black fluid. Before, Osiris watches the Crucible match unfold. He does not cheer for either opponent. When a ghost appears to revive the defeated warrior, Osiris leans forward in careful study. When Saint places a hand on his forearm, Osiris holds impossibly still, just to see what the other man will do. Before, Osiris sits by the campfire as Crow and the Guardian share a drink. Osiris watches them with rapt attention. Crow is laughing. He passes the bottle, and Osiris, hands numb, puzzles at it. His mouth hangs in a half-smile before he takes a long drink slaking a bone-deep thirst. Before, Osiris takes a shaky step forward. The High Celebrant howls in the catacombs, and he hears his sister's voice buried in its roar. He feels his heart beating in his chest, and is so enraptured by the sensation that he forgets to be frightened. Before, Savathun, physical form a twisting instar, emerges from the shadows and crawls over the shattered pieces of the ghost. She reaches toward the ruined man. Before, Savathun squeezes through the calcified channels of ascendant energy and manifests within the dangling Ahamkara skull. The man standing below the netting senses her appearance. His light flares as he draws his weapon with impossible speed. She has only a moment. She pushes her face down through the ropes, opens her mouth, and sings. The man stops, then slowly holsters his weapon. He turns, crosses his arms, and forgets. She melts awkwardly back into the skull as best she can, though a tangle of spindly elbows, licorice black, still juts from its sockets. She turns her attention to her quarry across the gap, and hums her song softly to mask herself. Soon the man below begins to hum along with her. She smiles. Each of these moments that is mentioned can be traced back to a specific lore tab or a moment in the story, and all of them reveal little hints that Savathun was indeed watching us all along. The first of these moments is from the Season of the Splicer, and is from the Beneath the Endless Night lore book in the seventh entry, called Ripe. The second is from the retro-futurist Shotgun's lore, which dropped in the Season of the Chosen. 
The third is from the lore tab of the Hawk Moon, which dropped in the season of the hunt near its conclusion. The fourth is from her first moments in dwelling within Osiris's form at the very beginning of the season of the hunt. The fifth is from just before she took possession of Osiris's form. And the final moment is earlier at an undesignated time when she infected Lord Shax, perhaps the metaphorical Patient Zero, with her song. Eris knew that this was a risk, and for the longest time, so many were unable to persuade Shax to remove the Ahamkara skull, as Eris will attest to in this dialogue from the season of Arrivals. Hey, Three Eyes. Shax says you sang him a little ditty. What? Shax, Chunky Titan, One Horn. Did you sing him a song on the moon? What a senseless question. Yeah, I didn't think so. Stay off this channel. Should I need you, I'll call. Wait. Uh, I didn't hang up. Does that oaf still keep that skull with him? In the tower? Yeah, hangs it over his spot. I wouldn't have tangled with that thing. Desperate times. This... Lil Diddy... Did it go? That would be the one. <laughs> what is it? Savathun's song. It's a viral chant. It can never be unheard. Now that Savathun has announced herself, relics of the dark across the system have begun to awaken. Tell Shax to remove that skull immediately. Sister, I already tried. What did that oaf say? No. It appears that now our greatest fears are somewhat confirmed. Savathun's song offers her a limited degree of control over those who hear it. Shax, upon hearing Savathun's song, was pacified and was turned into a carrier who spread the song far and wide within the ranks of the Guardians. From Crow to Saint-14 to Eris Morn to the Drifter to us. So many have heard the song that it now seems almost impossible that any have escaped its grasp. Any degree of control that Savathun has been able to exert is potentially disastrous at this point. Just a single light bearer, manipulated in the correct way, is able of creating an untold amount of carnage. They could lead to the death and destruction of the Vanguard, the Queen of the Reef, any number of targets within the Reef or the City, and any event that might help to organize peace or union between the forces allied with the Light and Soul might be easily scattered by one stray, dissuaded light bearer. Savathun has perfected her tactic of influencing others, and whilst the harm she could do with it is unknown, so is the harm that she has already done. We are now in a place of terrible danger, as it appears that Savathun has been planning these next moments for longer than we could possibly have anticipated. Her plans are soon to unfold, and I fear that even contained as she is within the chrysalis, she may in fact be powerful beyond reckoning. The Witch Queen's greatest weapon was, after all, not a blade or a hammer, but the spoken word, with any intent one could twist within it, turned into a barb that would leave the victim mortally wounded and yet alive without realizing their injury, poisoned from within by sorcery and deed alike, all until the time when the Witch Queen could benefit most from their downfall. Savathun is not weak in her shell. She has been hunting us for so long now, and we must be wary. We may yet be birds with broken wings, nothing but playthings in the paws of a hungry cat. We must be ready for anything. But that's all from me for today. If you enjoyed the video and were fascinated by the number of times that we should have been able to see through Savathun's ruse, Go ahead and let me know down below in the comments section, and remember to leave a like. If you want more Destiny lore, go ahead and hit subscribe, and the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. But as per usual, know that your viewership is quite enough for me, and that in the meantime, my name has been My Name is Bife, Parodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside.